I have so many Arduinos. For example, in my finished modules in my rack, I already have one. 10, 11. And so I buy a lot of these, like I have many in my racks. I also use a lot for my prototyping, but I also sell a bunch of these. Uh, pre-programmed with, uh, for uh, example, uh, branches, gri grids, ADOS, ADSR, or the Sith uh, firmware. So I buy a bunch. Uh, I buy, usually I buy them 10 at a time. Uh, and recently I bought from one one seller on, on AliExpress. These are, of course, clones. Uh, and all the modules I bought from them has worked flawlessly. All these are with this little yellow tape here is with the uh, old bootloader. And then these new ones that doesn't have anything is with a new bootloader. So this one is a bit faster to uh, add the firmware to. Other than that, they are, have been working, all of them. But recently, so <laughs> recently I bought 30 of these uh, from that same seller and they were all these new bootloader and they all seem to have a problem uh, with pin one and two or, or D, uh, D, is it D0 and D1, so TX and RX pins as well. And usually for most people and most programs, it's not, a, it's not an issue, it's not a problem. But in very many of these uh, firmwares that I've built and also that Emily has built with the mutable instruments once. Uh, D, D0 and D1 is actually used. Uh, and there is a few people who have complained that there was, for example, there's an error with the branches where, or Grena in, in my case, uh, where channel 2 doesn't work. And the same with ADSR, that channel 2 doesn't work. Uh, and that is because both these modules use uh, D0 and D1 for the second channel. And somehow these new modules, so these work, but this new one doesn't work for some reason. So I started looking into it and I mean, I quite quickly realized that it, it can't be a software problem. It's not a problem with a chip. It needs to be something with the, uh, with the surrounding circuit of this. And um, I started looking and looking at one that was working and one that wasn't working and looking under the uh, under a microscope for all the components that is here everywhere and finally i found on the bottom there is two resistors down there that are different on the ones that are working they are 1k resistors and on these ones that doesn't work, I found two variants. One that has just a square on it, and the other one is 821, so that is 820 ohms. And the square, I figured, is 0 ohms, because I don't get any reading at all on that one. It's just 0. Um, so this, the 821 goes to uh, digital pin zero and the uh, zero one goes to digital pin one. So this 
kind of works. I'll get to that why that is. And the other one that doesn't work at all is this one, which has 151 on both uh, resistors, which is basically 150 ohms, which is way too small. So I tried just to solder these away, just took them away and see if that made a difference uh, to the functionality of the uh, pre-programmed uh, Arduino. And when putting this one back in the ADSR, for example, it worked flawlessly and all the, the second channel worked as well as the first channel. Uh, so, of course, it had to do with these two. But what didn't work when uh, removing these is, of course, to uh, to program the chip. So it was completely dead when you plugged it into the computer and, and tried to upload a new sketch to it. That didn't work. So um, I tried to do this. I didn't have any surface mount components, but just to try the theory, uh, I added two 1K resistors. Botch that in there. It works. It's not easy, but it can be done. Um, and with these in place, both the firmware upload worked fine and also the functionality of the module worked just as it should. So working backwards, trying to, I mean, these are clones. There's tons and tons of different uh, schematics out there on the internet. So I worked backwards trying to find one schematics that might work that could explain this. Um, and I found this one which should explain uh, what the problem is. So you have uh, PD0 and PD1 or D0 and D1 here. Uh, they are connected uh, first of all to two LEDs connected to 5 volts with 1K resistors there. This is not the problem because those are of course on the top side of the Arduino here. So just next to the LEDs they are there. So those are up here. That's not the problem. But then it is connected to the CH340 chip here on the back side. And here we also have two 1K resistors uh, that I measured uh, and that this is the two uh, resistors on the back that goes into the CH340. So my theory is that when these two are too small value, uh, the input to the D0 and D1, for example, from a gate somewhere in the circuit, goes in there. Um, in this, these 1K resistors stops the signal from going for too much of the signal going into the CH340. But when there's so little resistance here and here, uh, the signal is split in two or, or takes the easiest route, which seemed to be with these two too small to go into the CH340 instead of into the 80 mega 328. Uh, and that's the problem. So as soon as you add these uh, 1K resistors, it's, it goes back to working as normal. And this is of course the problem with China clones that they take whatever components they have at hand that is cheapest at the moment, I'm guessing. So it should be noted here that the ones that have 820 ohm resistors, they're probably pin or D1 works, uh, but not D0 because that is zero ohms. Um, so my, because 820 ohms is maybe close enough to 1K that it would work. But again, zero ohms is way off. Uh, so might as well, if you have 820 and zero or 150 ohms, you might as well uh, just exchange those for 1K resistors uh, to have the Arduino work as it should. So it was, it's been a few days since I did the uh, 
previous part of this video, uh, and I thought I'd append this little thing. Two things I've noticed. I just pulled this out of the rack uh, because I wanted to try a new firmware uh, and just wanted to see what was on this. And this is, of course, wrong. So even the ones that seem to work uh, quite well uh, do have this is, has the half error so it's a 820 and a zero ohm resistor here uh, so that's the epiphany number one uh, the second one is regardless if we have the correct ones here or not uh, we also have these two on the front uh, that also take power from the output so the, the LEDs could also affect the output a bit, especially if you use it uh, as a DAC, as I do in this one. Um, so, and there is a lot of red light blinking in the back of my uh, modular because the, the RX and TX blinks all the time as soon as you use these ports. So I thought a good way to fix that is just to re remove these two uh, resistors here, which happen to be 102K resistors. So these are really nice resistors with the correct value. So what I've done with quite a few already is I just remove these two resistors here, 102K, and then I remove these two, and I take these two resistors, put here, and voila, it's uh, much, much better. It works. You can upload uh, sketches to it, and you won't get the blinky blinky lights in the back of your modular, uh, and probably it won't take as much power from the D0 and D1 ports. So just a quick fix uh, on to do this so you don't even need to buy new uh, resistors you have them already on board there so that was just what i had to add to this already extensive video take care again bye